Hey everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here for another study session Saturday. This Saturday, we're going to talk about basic clinical math and how to work the equation for it. So I was recording my podcast episode that's going to be releasing on Wednesday. So check that out too. It's about community college structure. And my guest speaker, Natalie, and I were actually talking about clinical math a little bit and how scary it can be, especially if you're not a person that likes math to begin with. Uh, like myself, I find math scary and consider myself to be pretty bad at it. But for veterinary math, what I found was there's the physical component to it that makes it quite easy once you grasp the basic concepts. So we have our patient in front of us that we can see weighs this much. We have our drugs that tell us they have this many milligrams per milliliter. So the, the physical aspect of it, I think makes it a little bit easier once you can grasp the basic concepts. So I'd like to start out today with just some definitions. When we're in practice, sometimes the words dose and dosage will be used interchangeably. However, this is not correct. These two words mean very different things. So I'm just gonna start you out with a few definitions today. So the first one is dose. And this is the amount of drug in mass. So this is going to be your milligrams or grams or grains. So these are measurements of mass of the drug. And then definition two is your dosage. So this is drug mass per unit of body weight of your patient. So this is where, where we're going to run into the labels like milligram per kilogram or mig per kg or something like milligram per pound or mig per, per pound. Our last one is concentration. So this is going to be the mass of the drug per volume. So this is where we see the labels milligram per milliliter or mig per mil or something like milligram per pound. So these labels are what we're referring to when we say concentration of a drug. There is sort of a, a subset definition on here, strength for concentration, because when we refer to things like tablets and capsules, strength seems like a more appropriate term to use as it's milligrams per capsule or tablet as opposed to the volume of a drug that would be a liquid. So you can also use strength and that would be an appropriate term to use for like tablets and capsules. So those are some definitions that I'd like you to have as we get started here. And now I'm gonna change up my board and we're gonna move into some clinical math. So when we are talking about clinical math, you know, I started out by saying that it's, it's more physical and it's less scary than the math that you've had up to this point. I think it's less scary because you can see what you're doing. But there are some math principles and concepts that you need to pull out from the blacked out area of your brain that you totally forgot about. So there are some concepts that we will need to use from our basic math that we learned in, I don't know, junior high or high school or wherever we learned these parts. All right, so when we're getting started here, we will say we have an 8.8 .8 pound patient. So our equation that we're going to use that's called dimensional analysis is setting us up to be able to figure out how many, we're gonna use milliliters for this example, of a drug we'll need to give to our 8.8 .8 pound patient. Okay, so I'm gonna set up the equation real quick for you and then we'll go back through it. So we're gonna do 8.8 .8 pounds. Let's see, and we have kilograms. And then we have our drug will be, for this example, our drug will be three milligrams per kilogram or mig per kg. And then our concentration for our example drug will be four migs per mil. And we wanna know how many mils of this drug we're gonna give. So our basic things that we need to remember, when we're dealing with fractions, any whole number represented in fraction form is the whole number over one. So that means our whole number here as a fraction is represented like this. 
The next thing that you need to remember is how to multiply and divide within fractions. So if we subset this down, if we're looking at these two fractions together, numbers that are on the bottom, we're going to take this number divided by this number. If we end up with numbers that are on the top together, those numbers are going to be multiplied. So I'll break that down further and we'll get into that a lot more in detail as we go through this equation, but that's another basic principle that you need to remember. The last one is when we set up these equations, the way that all of these random little labels mark each other out is they have to be on opposites, okay? So our pound and our pound, now they cancel each other out. Kilogram, kilogram, they will cancel each other out. Milligram, milligram, cancel each other out. So then we're left with our mils, which is what we need. All right, so to set up this equation, doctor says, okay, we have an 8.8 .8 pound patient. For you young folks, this old school sign is the pound sign, not just the hashtag. And like I said, our concentration or our dosage we wanna give is three migs per kg. So this is our dosage. And then, like I said, our concentration is gonna be the four migs per mil. All right, so let's get started here. So we wanna first make sure that we can get our patient into kgs so we can figure out how many milligrams we need to give them. So how we're gonna go about that is take 8.8 .8 and divide it by 2.2. So if we take 8.8 .8 divided by 2.2, then it tells us that our patient is four kilograms. Perfect. So next step, we still need to figure out how many milligrams so that we can figure out how many mils. Now, remembering our basics of how we multiply and divide within fractions, whole number. So this is now a top number. So in our next small part of our equation, we have two top numbers. So these are gonna multiply. So now we have 12 milligrams. Perfect. Now I know I need to give my patient 12 milligrams, but I still don't know how many milliliter milliliters that is. So we have one more step here. So remembering our basics over one for a whole number and then a number that's on the bottom, we're going to divide. So 12 divided by 4 yay! So now I know for my 8.8 .8 pound patient, we went through this big long scary equation and they need 3 mils of the drug. We did it! So I am a visual learner and I, I know how the equation works and we learned it in school, but for me, it was really helpful to also be able to see the breakdown. So I made a little chart for you guys to be able to see in case you're more of a visual learner and kind of need to see this in some other way besides scary, big, long equations. Okay. So I've got this for you here. All right. So we started with our 8.8 .8 pound patient, and we know that it's 2.2 pounds for every one kilogram of weight. So I've got these subset down. So 2.2 pounds, one kilogram, 2.2 pounds, two kilograms, three and four. Okay, patient weighs four kilograms. The next part of the equation was they need three milligrams for every one kilogram of weight, okay? So I made my little three milligram groupings, one, two, three, four kilograms of weight, three milligram groupings for each kilogram of weight. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 milligrams. And then the last step was figuring out how many milligrams per milliliters, or knowing how many milligrams per milliliter to figure out how many mils we give this patient. So we know our drug was four mg per mil. So I have little groupings of four down here, okay? And I've got 12 total milligrams. And then when I group my fours up into milliliters, one, two, 
three milliliters of drug. So that wraps us up for today, guys, for our study session Saturday, Clinic Math Basics. I'm hoping to have a few more sessions of this, go into things like, you know, if your doctor tells you they need this many mix per kg and it's a capsule, figuring out how many capsules we need to count up for them to be able to dispense with the patient. So more to come on our math. And if you guys have any questions or concerns regarding this lesson, feel free to message me or comment below. You can also email me at KendraTheVetTech at gmail.com. Also, if you have anything you wish to learn about, something you're learning in school and maybe need a little more assistance with or something you're seeing around practice that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, do message me about those. I would love ideas to have some study session Saturdays in the queue. Thanks, guys.